And it's time for voiceover body shop once again. And our guest tonight is a perennial master of all sorts of voiceover stuff. John Bailey, wave, John, and say hi. Hi. There you go. All right. We got lots of stuff to talk about. If you got a question for him, get in the chat room. Get involved in the show. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, if you've got a question about all the stuff that John does, we're going to talk to him a little bit about it. And if you have more questions about it, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman, star of Being the Ricardos. I don't know if he was star. We'll just give him the compliment. And uh, we'll get that question here. and We'll get to ask John that question. So stay after tuned. after hearing John for a while, you'll have more questions. More, much more, much more. All that right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. <laughs> and Happy New Year, everybody! A player organ. Margo Wagon is a common duster. Yeah. We always sing that. Oh, whenever... I had to do it. I had yeah. to do it. Yeah. Whenever the UPS guy or the FedEx guy shows up, we st Marcy and I start singing that, and they're all like, what? <laughs> Anyway, uh, Happy so New Year, funny. everybody. I'm Dan happy Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Yeah, everybody in Pennsylvania. Come on, everybody. That was your part. Thank oh. you. Well, that was that was pretty lame. Anyway. One take. This is live. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no retakes here. We have anyway. a audience in my room here. Yeah, and I, I think they're going to be harassing him for the next couple of hours. Anyway, uh, we have a great guest tonight. We're going to talk to him in a second. And, George, you are not here in Southern California. You are way on the other side of the continent yep. in Pennsylvania. The audience. Oh, hey, there's George's dad and his mom and a friend of his. And my and... old friend, Paul Diener. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> what, what, what happened to your brother, Steve? I know he was there a second ago. I know. He, uh he got bored. <laughs> <laughs> he, ran, he ran out of insults. So anyway. Yeah, he ran out of insults, yeah. No, actually, it, I think he was watching it in his room because it sounds better in there. Oh, okay. It doesn't, <laughs> it, it, listening to it live doesn't sound better? No, anyway. you can't get better than this. Yeah. Once again, if you've got a question for John Bailey or a tech question for George and I, throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll be able to answer that question. We love questions. That's how everything runs on this show, by the way, if you haven't noticed, if you haven't watched before. But where have you been? Anyway, it's time to introduce our guest who we're going to be talking to uh, tonight. Uh, you know, if you've 
if you have ears, and obviously you do if you're listening to us, uh, you've heard John Bailey at one point in your life, from commercials to promos to cartoons to, well, you name it. He has been there and has said that. He is the epic voice of the Emmy-nominated Honest Trailers, Optimus Prime in Transformers Combiner Wars. Uh, XCOM, Dishonored 2, Marvel 5, Capcom, Infinite, Halo Wars 2, and more. Plus, he does tons of ADR work, which I'm always fascinated with. Or you may know John from his social media content and brand work. With a combined 1.4 billion views on social media, does he get like a dollar for every one of them? In which case, you know, he'd be really happy. Uh, but with all that, people, that's a good bet that you've heard his voice. Let's welcome back... One of our favorite friends here, John Bailey. Welcome back to VoiceOver Body Shop. Oh, hi there. How are you? God, good to see you, man. How you doing? Give me stones. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we picked New a great class. day. <laughs> great for the man. <laughs> Suffering for my art, you guys. <laughs> Just, oh, hey, showtime. God. Showtime. Anyway, welcome Thanks back to the here. show. Thanks and for having me on again. It's always a pleasure having you on. I'm not uh, in any pain at all. It's great. <laughs> just, <laughs> just grinning. Look, if you have to take a break, just give us the old break sign, and we'll we'll okay. go to a break and Let's let you go do what you need to my do. Small sensitive balls. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so welcome back to the show. I haven't really talked to you much in the last over the pandemic. How did, how did you handle the pandemic? There was a pandemic. I've been there was. It's still years. going on, from what I understand. I've been, been doing nonstop voiceover for two straight years. The door finally opened. It, it jimmied shut, and I couldn't get it open. I lived off roaches and ants. Um, there's a lot of protein. <laughs> um, yeah. So I fashioned these clothes out of out of, uh, of soundproofing material. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant urine stain in the corner over here. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I got very, I, first I lost some work and then I got really, really busy with work and then it just like kind of took off. I mean, I wasn't the only one. I had a few friends that were like, yeah, things have been going pretty good. Voiceover is kind of bulletproof right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I've heard that from a lot of people. I mean, I've been busy too. So it's, uh, you know, I, the, the funny thing. Who didn't already have a booth. <laughs> Yeah, really. You know, as, good at folks. <laughs> as, as Mark Cashman said, George and I were busier than a one-legged guy at an ass-kicking contest. Everybody that I knew was like, I need to get a booth now. I'm like, what have you been doing this whole time? You're supposed to be bigger than me. <laughs> really? We warned them. I know. George, have we not been warning people for the last 10, 15 the years? Going, it's going to rain. <laughs> get your booth, man. Yeah, we sure have. But, you know, there were so many folks who were, you know, in the, in the studio system in Hollywood who just, they just yeah. hop in the car and they just never really needed one. But uh, they head over to know, uh, car their pants down <laughs> for $10. <to> <laughs> exactly so what what have you been working on lately i mean i mean you oh, i mean man. you've got I can't you've got a diverse tell you there was there's non-disclosure agreement and then there's this other non-disclosure agreement there's so, like 10 non-disclosure agreements that are really really cool but the biggest one is the big non-disclosure agreement so okay. yeah that's pretty much everything you're all caught up now. all right <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, many it's a... things so many th uh i'm dubbing for a lot of ryan reynolds movies and uh dubbing for uh, i'm not sure how much am i allowed to say but i i did adr for hawkeye which is already out but i don't know if i'm allowed to say what i did but yeah if you you don't have to listen too hard unless i'm just that good which i don't think i'm that good but yeah if you you you, you hear me in there as as characters voices or a yeah. Character voice. yeah um, for those who don't know what ex ex explain to us what adr is adr explain adr and, and uh, why they would use yeah, why would they use you instead of the real guy? It's What's auto demolition res restoration, and they give me an old car, and then they go through <laughs> weeks, and there's a narrator that's like, now today they're going to be replacing the bumper, but there's drama. On the <laughs> um, so, I mean, you guys give me a better – I've always thought that automated dialogue replacement it, or automated digital recording makes more sense than, you know, because there's nothing automated about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's audio dialogue replacement is what I think it should mean because it makes the most sense, but it doesn't mean that. But yeah, it's literally just, um, there's multiple kinds. There's Walla for background characters. There's efforts. Um, I recommend seeing the, the video Hugh Jackman did of Logan where he did all the efforts uh, in, a, in the ADR booth. He is incredibly good at it. And it's like, wow, that, that's the bar, folks, for people doing ADR. Uh, a lot of actors re-record their own audio, but 
when they're making the film very early on and they're just storyboarding or they're just doing the animatronics or the, the animatics for it, a lot of the dialogue has not been finalized yet. So they have somebody like me come in and do 20 sessions of, well, this, we're going to change this to this and change this to that. In the meantime, I'm also filling in for background characters or other, and you never know what characters might end up in the final version of the film, but it's always a lot of fun, especially on a Ryan film. Cause they're like, just do what Ryan would do it. Ryan can do whatever he wants to, which makes it super fun for me. Um, so, uh, and then they, once they finalize things, they go back and have the original actor redo it. And sometimes some of my stuff will slip in and sometimes it won't, but I get paid a lot of money to do it. I have a really great time. Sometimes I even get credited for in the film and sometimes I'll get final voices in there as well. Uh, Red Notice is one I worked on that I'm allowed to talk about cause it's out now, but none of, my, none of my audio ended up in the final thing, but I did tons of sessions for it. I filled in for Ryan's voice, Dwayne Johnson's voice, the, uh, the villain's voice who sounded like Mr. Potter just voice didn't fit in at all. Um, it's, you know, so it's, it's stuff like that, that I just, I, they're like, Hey, can you do this and this? I'm like, yeah. And sometimes I, I, in fact, I was in the middle of a session with legendary pictures and Marvel was on the phone with me and I'm supposed to be listening to the director and I'm over there signing non-disclosure agreements for another session for like, like, it's like, as soon as you get done with this, can you record this dialogue and send it back? So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, Bruce Willis, I'm six, six films now. I think I worked on that was the, that was a sun, fun session. I did that doubled over in pain from kidney stones on New Year's Eve. <laughs> and then well, he's literally like, like this. Like, <sighs> I mean, he sounds like he's on kidney stones anyway. So it was, it was perfect. Yeah, well, he, he was, he was shot somewhere towards the end of the film, which <laughs> tends to be in a lot of his movies. Now that way they give him an excuse not to have to move so much because he's older. So I'm just like, don't worry. This is, this def this, this bullet pain is definitely coming from a real place. <laughs> no, no acting required. <laughs> That's that's the most important part of acting is if you can recall that stuff and bring it out. But yeah, well, if you're he, actually in that position, that, that yeah, that, he he compared me to Jim Carrey. He said that he worked on uh, on the mask and that Jim Carrey had the stomach flu, and Cameron Diaz was holding the bucket while he threw up between takes, and they filmed the entire Cuban Pete musical number while he was sick as a dog. Wow. And he said that he's like, this is for me. This is the same level of of an actor's dedication to do the job because kidney stones, bro. Are you kidding me right now? I was like, bro, yeah. you compared me to Jim Carrey. I I will take that as a compliment. I, yeah, really. And he was he was he was so impressed. I was like, imagine what I could do if I didn't have kidney stones. <laughs> we still got done an hour early. We I did a three hour session in two hours. Part of it was just like, get done, get done, and go lay down, <laughs> curl up in the fetal position, never walk again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, as long as you're having fun while you're in pain, that helps a yeah. lot. Well, it took the focus. Excuse me, took the focus off the pain a little bit. So. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it, when the lights come up, it's showtime and suddenly everybody, you know, it sort of has the, uh, you know, the energy to do what well, needs he, to be he done. He said something really nice to me. He said, you have what I call the music. And he's like, it's something special. Hang on. Sorry. I'm on the phone. Da, 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 da. Well, there we go. I can't, buddy. I'm on the phone. I'm working right now. I need you to be cool, okay? This break is on TV. Yeah. The fun this of working break. from home, folks. Yep. This break brought to you by. <laughs> I'm busy, I'm busy this, no. this is something that happens here a lot, too. Know, buddy, this is just reality right here, folks. That's right. Sometimes. That was one of the questions I wanted to ask him about, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Again, if you've got a question for John Bailey, I mean, look at all what he's told us so far about the type of work that he does. Uh, and I, I'm and sure you probably have a lot of questions about that. Dealing with an autistic kid who's angry and wants what he wants. Uh, I'm oh. sure Dan, Dan knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to shut this door so I don't have to hear yelling over something that I'm sure is it can wait 30 minutes. <laughs> and that's what a soundproof booth is for. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to get really warm in here now, and I'm already pretty warm with well. the <laughs> doing that that session like i would get hot flashes i would get so warm and then i would get really cold and then warm and cold and warm and cold I was like just freaking come out of me already jeez <laughs> <laughs> stop wow. tormenting me tormentors yeah so i you've been you've been doing a lot of work and you've been very busy yeah but, how was uh, that i mean but you've been doing it in a very crowded house how did that go uh, a little less crowded now that I'm in the middle of getting a divorce, unfortunately. Oh, um, but sorry to hear there's, that. so there's, uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, it's everything's for the best as far as we, what's best we know. Um, so I'm just got the two out of four with me. So there's less folks in the house, but I have the one who 
is autistic, so there's a lot of interruptions. He's the loudest uh, one. It's yeah. not, yeah, it's not easy, and he just burrows his way, bullies his way in, and because he, he wants what he wants, and he doesn't want to take no for an answer. And it's like, well, you know what? I got, I have people here to help with that, so you're just gonna have to deal. That's uh, right. So that's that's they're literally a job is to keep him cool, and he's trying to come through the door, and I'm like, well, this is why we have locks. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, I booked, uh, I booked Animaniacs, which is a huge thing for me that happened during cool. the pandemic. They had to postpone it because of the COVID because it was supposed to originally come out in September and it ended up getting pushed all the way to Thanksgiving. So, and it was, I was in the trailer and I still wasn't allowed to talk about it. <laughs> and everybody's like, John, is that you? And I was like, I wanted to say yes, but at the same time, I'm like, that's literally the only thing I did in the season. So, <laughs> so I want to say yes, because they put my whole part in there. There's not more than that. Once you watch the show, but yeah, that was a huge one. I was such a big fan of Animaniacs growing up, and I've in season two I got to be in one of Yakko's songs with Rob Paulson. Oh, cool! And it was such a great because he was still there whenever. And every time I catch him at the studio before he leaves, I'll come knock on his window. I was like, "Excuse me, you have time to talk about your car's extended warranty?" <laughs> 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 and he's like, "John." And he's like, "So when I got in the studio, I was like, yeah, Rob, Rob heard you were coming in to do the song with him.'" And he said, "Tell John Bailey not to screw it up." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, so I'll that, do my best not to let you down. But. Oh, that's that's a once in well, maybe hopefully more than once in a lifetime opportunity. More than an opportunity. Yeah, yeah that, that was to work I with. Mean, Ron I've Paulson. always wanted to be in something with Frank Welker too, and now I have been. Wow, so you've you've come to Hollywood at the right time. I mean, you've been here what? I mean, four, I guess five five years now. Five it's, years it's, now. Still, I'll be five years. Yeah, and uh, uh, transitioned so, back and forth for for two or three years before that. I remember, and uh, but. But now you're here, and now yeah. apparently it was the right move for you. Yeah, I mean, you, you you were there for part of the journey, man. You made me my army tent booth <laughs> to keep me going. <laughs> oh, Talk about a hot one to record it, man. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah, in this tiny little apartment in yeah. West oh, Hollywood. That was, not, that was supposed to be a house. That was not a house. That was a room. <laughs> a very small room, as I recall. room with walls. <laughs> I basically slept on the floor. I was, Like I said, we, we suffered for our art. It took a lot of work to get where I am. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with John Bailey, who does just about everything. Uh, one it's of the things that, knife of voices. When I yeah. Tell myself. yeah. Um, one of the things you do is uh, is honest trailers, which is what you're known for. Uh, explain to people what that is if they haven't watched. I mean, so I mean, it's I, the uh, it's a YouTube series where they got the originally they were like. It's so dishonest the way that a movie trailer presents a film because they make it look like it's the best movie ever. And sometimes when you finally see the film, like, man, that trailer was complete crap. <laughs> it wasn't near as good as the trailer made it out to be. And so they kind of came up with a concept of doing a trailer that was honest about the movie and, and pointed out all the things that are horrible about it. And it became kind of a way, a, a different way to review a film. And they originally had somebody else on there and about 13 episodes in, it was kind of spread out over time. But now it, we do it every week. Uh, after the 13th or so, they, they'd gone through like three different voices. And the, their main guy had gone into active service. And they were looking for somebody to fill in for him, I think, originally. And then when they found me, they were like, oh, hey, we saw your website. Because by that time, I'd actually had an established resume of most of it was never back down to rated PG-13, now on Blu-ray and DVD. Because it was like a directed DVD trailer type stuff. But, you know, it was still real, real trailer work. And they were like, wow, we saw your stuff. And you do you do this for a living. You're like an actual movie trailer voice guy. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And he sent me a video of the thing. I was like, oh, this is pretty funny. The writing's solid. I, I get what you're doing here. And he's like, would you be con well, considered, you know, doing this in exchange for like us having to try to grow your YouTube channel and whatever. That's kind of how it started. And eventually it turned into an actual paid job. And, you know, people came in and was like, okay, we should be getting paid more money for this. <laughs> <laughs> and then it became very, very, very big. Um, and somebody in the chat says, I've ever done an honest trailer for a movie that I did the trailer for. That's happened more than once. In fact, there's been honest trailers of games that I worked on and I had to be very careful about like what, what they said. I'm like, you kind of need to run this by the people who do this because this affects my career whenever I'm working on a thing. And, you know, so, uh, because I, I, the more I work on, the more eventually they're going to be doing honest trailers for things that I've actually worked on. And I don't want to hurt anybody's, any client's feelings because some of them can be a little sensitive. Yeah. Where where can pe people can just go to Honest Trailers on YouTube? Yeah, they just and go. To, those? They go to just Google or YouTube and type Honest Trailers in. They'll find it instantly. But yeah, I've done uh, five hundred plus of the movies and over five hundred of the. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like total. There's at least a thousand, I think, of like between the movies and the games. Wow, that's 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 and a lot of work. And the TV shows and the anime. They they kind of expanded for a bit. 
Yeah. You know, one of the other, you, you want, you've also been doing a lot of gaming work. It looks like you've done gaming lots of a lot of fun. I've been doing I, NPCs for a long time. I haven't been yeah. a regular yet, but I'm getting there. I've got some characters with names. That's a, that's a start. Wow. <laughs> See, now I remember I was auditioning for something somewhere. I was at a studio in Burbank and, you know, I'm looking at the script and I'm reading it. I'm like, you know, John Bailey would be much better at doing this. And then I walk out the studio door and into the lobby and who's sitting there, but John Bailey. Didn't get the job though. No. <laughs> Neither of us did. Neither so. of us did, but I appreciate it. <laughs> what so doing? What's doing gaming work like? Uh, the gaming work, I have to be careful about when I schedule it because of the efforts. And usually they're pretty cool about it, but lately it's been kind of awesome. They just kind of send me the script and let me record on my own, which is not normal for a video game session. No. Especially usually with most games, especially AAA titles, they actually have to have you come in a studio. They want this professional type of type of set. They want something with Source Connect. They want ISDN. They want high quality audio. They want a whisper room. They want a studio bricks room. Um, so they, they, they're very, very picky about, in fact, they want to run sound checks to make sure your audio is as good as you claim it is. But for a lot of mobile games, especially uh, mobile games and things that are not AAA titles, they're pretty cool about just like, Hey, here, here you go. And it's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Thanks. And then the rates are end up being more than scale for a triple A title. And I'm like, oh, I'll freaking take your money. Absolutely. Uh, this is a road NTK with its own power supply, by the way, Jim. Cool. Just random. I'm just answering the easy ones. <laughs> short, short answers are the fast. You, you got any softballs there, there, George, you can All throw right. in there. Well, that's a That's a road NTK. So that's a tube mic with an external mm -hmm. power supply. Have you, have you been using that mic a long time? I've been using this mic ever since the beginning, and I've only had to replace the tube in it once, thanks to Dan's suggestion. And uh, I eventually, when you told me that they had a lifetime warranty, which they don't do that anymore now, it's a five-year five year warranty, and you have to have the receipt for original purchase. They changed it a little bit for people like me who bought it secondhand, but they did send me a replacement microphone. So I've had this replaced once, but it's still the same mic. Cool. It is, it is a great mic. I mean, yeah. tube microphones are an acquired taste, and they do have that little... They've got a great you know, sound. They sound amazing. They're just not solid state. So there's a yeah. piece inside that can fail eventually. And yeah, as long as and I can tell to... when it fails. Because <laughs> like, what, what, what is that thing? What is that sound I'm it's hearing? It's that. It's that well, thing that's actually, going yeah, bad. Exactly. <laughs> that, 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 you mentioned that. What was the symptom? Because I've heard the Avalon. It sounded like something a phone. If your phone was on, that digital cracking stuff, and it's just like you think that there's because what happened previously was that the, the mic cord was too close to the power cord and it picked up a little bit of electric feedback from it. Once I got the cords separated from each other, the audio was fine. But then I kept hearing that sound again. And I noticed that when I would tap on the mic or I bump it a little bit, it would go away. And I'm like, that's something inside the microphone. So yeah. that's when I contacted Dan. He's like, oh, this is super easy. It's only 12 bucks to replace this part. And it's like, you pop it in and pop it back and all done, all good. Nice. These, guys, these guys know their stuff, man. You should listen to them more often. <laughs> well, was, we try. It was a socket. You just plug them. It was a yeah, socket. You, just, you just wiggle you just, it. You just socket. No, no screws. But you just very carefully wiggle it loose until you get it out, and then very carefully press it back in. Yep. Yeah. I fix all radios, so working with tubes is pretty much how it, it looks. Very much like a transistor radio, like uh, bulb from the old school radios. Yeah. Um, Sweetwater.com, I think it was like twelve to sixteen bucks. That's all. Yeah. They're still Not making them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I, I wanted to ask you about, somebody had mentioned this to me. Uh, they kept, they wanted, they wanted to get in touch with you because they were thinking that perhaps your voice had been synthesized and yeah, used in some, uh, not uh, the first know, time. Yeah. yeah. So what, what did you look when you into do, that at when all? You, when you do something popular enough, eventually somebody is going to AI that voice. I've already heard tons of very highly erotic fan fiction starring Tom Kenny. And then I know he did not record <laughs> So I'm not the only one. There was a viral video that went out where somebody had had a computer AI write a horror movie. So the dialogue is absolutely dreadful. And there's this, the villain in it is Mr. Puzzles. And it's my really bad AI voice. And it's like so cheesily stupid. But everybody's like tagging the crap. I'm like, hey, is that your voice? I'm like, yeah, that's a very badly cobbled stoned AI voice. Yeah. And then I started seeing people actually posting like actual trailers and commercials with that with that AI voice instead of mine. And I'm like, well, now we're getting into territory where I'm losing money because they're just taking my voice. So I don't know. I, I had worked for, at some point I'd worked for a company that said that they were working for an AI firm 
and they were trying to get a, uh, a, a roster of voices to use generic voices. They had a whole list, like a, it was like a hundred something things. And I was like, that's a, you know, that's a decent job. And they were willing to pay me directly for it. So X amount of dollars per, per, per voice. But then as they said that it was like five years out and I was very careful not to do the exact same honest trailer. I was like, look, this, this voice is kind of under contract. So if I record this for you and people make their own fake honest trailers with it, it could get me in trouble. So I said, I can't, I can do it. I can do the Don voice and I can do the other voice, but I can't do the stand, the one in between that I do for honest trailers. I, I couldn't do that for you. But because there was enough of it on there, I think that they went ahead and released a version of it, or at least an early version of it. And it's not it's not great. I mean, but you can tell it's it's AI still. But yeah. uh, and then when I contacted them, I was like, hey, people are saying that they're getting this voice from you. And you said we weren't even going to do that. And here it is. And like, we just thank you for bringing this to our attention. We didn't know this was going on, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just I stopped working for them because I was like, I think that they're I think they were just trying to, to take it. And they knew that it would be profitable because they could be able to sell it for cheap and sell it a lot and people would just make their own stuff with it. But thankfully, I didn't finish it. So the AI doesn't sound very good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, do you, what, are your, what would be your advice to everybody when, when they're thinking about AI? I mean, we, dis, we discuss this all the time. It's, it's hard because AI is both helpful and hurtful. It, it can damage the industry, but it can also be very beneficial because all the algorithms are based on artificial intelligence. So um, as far as social media goes, I think that's where I've, I've kind of finely tuned a little cord and I've been gathering fans like by the thousands every week for several weeks now because I kind of caught hold of how the algorithm reads what I'm doing. And it's like, OK, so you're doing this and this and this. This means people want to see this and it pushes it out more. So in that case, it's helping me. But in the t in the case where somebody takes a voice actor's voice cobbles together a fake version of it and then uses that voice to avoid having to pay that person money to make it sound right then it becomes an issue for us when we're losing money and they're getting crappy voiceover <laughs> yeah I, i'm you know everybody says oh it's getting really good the, the algorithm's really good i've listened i don't think it it's would work so on an extended on an extended it, long format i mean it, thing. it's it's about as good as the artificial robot people that they've been trying to make are where there's like <laughs> and it's like it looks like somebody having an epileptic seizure but sure that's supposed to be human <laughs> and their eyes are just like Rrr. i was like man westworld's a long ways off folks i think we're good so i mean i don't, I don't see i don't see ai getting good enough to replace someone at least for the, within another five years right um, well especially I, I, yeah go ahead i i think in that case i think it'll be someone who has passed away uh and they want to put together because i've actually seen that happen in a few movies where they they kind of AI together a, a JFK voice or, you know, a, a somebody who passed Ronald Reagan. So, so somebody that's got a famous voice or they have a famous story, but they need them to say something else kind of like they did in uh, Forrest Gump, except that they used a sound alike back then. And I think that eventually that will hurt people who do what I do more than anybody else, because the sound alikes will be replaced with AI voices. Right. Once again, we're talking with John Bailey, who does everything in voiceover. <laughs> Everything there is that you could possibly be done, he is doing that. I would and say he, no, but it's probably true. True, yeah. Including, including an orgy scene in a dumb Netflix series. <laughs> That's a great story for another time. Yeah. Um, you're also doing a lot of social media stuff. Tell us about it. Well, I always have, but it's uh, it's so hard to keep up with when you're doing everything yourself and you're not just, just the talent and they've got people to edit for you and people to post for you and people to do the engagement for you because there's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts, guys, a lot of moving parts, a lot of mechanisms and gizmos and gadgets involved in social media. So uh, you have to have something that's relevant. You have to have something that's, that uh, is popular enough but trending enough where people are like, oh, I know what this is from because this is something that I've been seeing out on other social media platforms. Like right now I'm doing things from The Matrix because The Matrix movie just dropped. And there's not really any other big movies that have dropped anywhere, anywhere close to it, um, especially if it's one that I worked on or one that I'm a really big fan of or one that involves a voice that I do really well. Like I did a ton of stuff for Free Guy to the point where people are like, dude, I think you got a really crazy obsession with Free Guy. I was like, no, I just made a lot of content with it because it was so easy. I went to the store and found clothes that are exactly the same as the movie. I do Ryan's, Ryan Reynolds voice already. It just made perfect sense to do it. So I just made a lot of great, really great funny stuff. And then I, I separated it out depending on how it was released. So I did stuff leading up to the theatrical premiere. And then I did stuff leading up to the digital release. And I did stuff at the uh, Blu-ray 4 because they all release at different dates. So that gives me content already saved up. And when things got, start to come close and become relevant again, I'm like, now I've got posts already made and then I'll do three in a row to make sure that they have a kind of a rhythm to them and keep, keep, keep the pattern up. You have to know when to post, like what time of day, uh, how often to post. 
um, it depends on the type of creator that you are. Some creators post more often uh, within four hours and they post like three times a day. And some people post once every few days and get just as many views and just as many uh, images. And that's just talking about Instagram. And that's right. YouTube has become its own network at this point. And it's very, very hard for creators to do much with YouTube anymore. Um, they, they, they claim they want to be creator friendly, but they really kind of pulled the carpet out from underneath the small creators and just kind of handed the keys to the kingdom over to big celebrities and big studios. And it's just like, it's, it's like Tubi or any other network is now. Right. Um, I mean, the Cobra Kai is, is a great illustration of what they came from and what they are now. So it's not, it's not what it was when we first started, we were, we were carrying YouTube because we were the ones putting the content in and we're as much as small creators like liking each other's stuff and watching each other's stuff and sharing with their friends. And now it's like those, get, those people, those users get suppressed and they get their content ID strikes and they get copyright strikes and they get demonetized for things. And they're just, the rules have gotten insanely complicated. You use a, the, you used to be able to use a clip of a show in order to talk about it and you could run the clip on your screen. And now as soon as you run that, somebody's like, Oh, that's my property. Now all that money is mine. And it just got to where it frustrated people like me because I'm like, I'm putting in a lot of work for free into this. And what little free time that I have when I'm not doing my, my main voiceover career, you guys are kind of hurting us. You're kind of stabbing us in the back a little bit. So when TikTok came out and, and I started noticing that it was going to be big, I started recommending voice actors get on there because a lot of the voice actor friends that I have, they may not have massive resumes. They probably have resumes similar to mine, but they have enough resume items where they have a fan base on there. Some of them do. Right. Some of them like Tara Strong and Debbie Derryberry and E.G. Daly. I was like, I told them all, like, get on freaking TikTok. And as soon as they did, they just exploded. Oh, yeah. And they were I've... verified and they've got millions and millions of views. And I'm like, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have that name recognition. And, well, I, you know, but yeah. I've seen them not do so well on Instagram. It takes very long, slow progress on getting views and getting likes. And it, takes, it took a long time to get there. With TikTok, it's very, very quick. Yeah. Um, and I told him that if you just get on there and just say, hey, I'm a voice actor and here's and just throw a picture because they already have all of the stickers or gifts or whatever you want to put on the screen of characters they've already voiced. If you type in Jimmy Neutron, Debbie Derryberry can literally put herself on the screen and be like, I'm the voice of Jimmy Neutron. And then millions of people like, oh, that's her. I know her. I watched that when I was such and such. Right. And that's what I kept telling people. And then they're like, what kind of content? I was like, first of all, just get on there and tell people what you do. And then you take their their comments and they say, say hey, can Jimmy Neutron say happy birthday to me? And then you make a video reply to that content. It's still content or comment. And it's still content to be made. Yeah. And I, I have a very small list of apps that I use to create my content with. I have one to edit with. Uh, most of them have voiceover options. I used to use a lot of deep fake as we talked about earlier, but then unfortunately the, the app shut down. So uh, a lot of people that do impressions or do sound alike stuff, take the time to like put the picture and put the, the name. And so that way you have text and an image of what people are looking and they're, they're spending more time looking at that instead of like looking at you. It was so much faster for me just to slap a face on. So that way they instantly knew who it was. And then because I, I when I first started the idea of like celebrities auditioning for famous roles, I would literally change outfits for every single actor. And it was like I would make a huge mess because I would go through so many clothes and I had to come up with outfits that I didn't even own. I just had to make them look right like Terminator. I was like, well, I have a leather jacket and I have a white T-shirt that I mean, sunglasses. There you go. OK, that'll work. Um, but I realized how much work I was putting into it, how much time it was taking. And I'm like, it'd be so much easier just to dress as the character and then swap 10, 15 faces in a video. And then I could just right. do the voices. I could record it in a row, just improv through the whole thing. And then editing was usually the longest part. Right. Uh, now I have to go and do this manually with the pictures and the text again, which is just a big pain in the butt to do it. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I, I released one on Instagram today. I did one for the Matrix and I didn't do any deep fake. I just wore sunglasses and dressed like, like Neo. Um, and there's plenty of filters like the one George is, is doing right now that <laughs> They're not, but they're not deep fake. They're, they're AR filters and AR filters are not quite as good because they tend to fall off depending on where you look or how you move. And if the face fits it right or whatever, and they don't have celebrity faces either. They used to, Snapchat used to have where you could import images of famous people in, but then people did bad things with those videos. Yeah. <laughs> not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah they, yeah. they put faces that on why people I, doing bad think things. That's why that's why, you I think they, that's why they had to get rid of the impressions. That's exactly why. That, no, that one had its own watermark on it. And they, they did the rendering off of the app. You had to upload the video to their servers. They would check the video. In fact, I remember when I was doing for Dude from the Free Guy movie, which is, he's a guy, big muscle guy. And I had a muscle suit on, a silicon muscle suit. But because I was shirtless in the video, they automatically flagged the video. We're like, this is under review. And I'm like, just for having my shirt, my fake shirt off, because it's not even my real muscles. <laughs> 
<laughs> that thing weighs like 35 pounds. You can't see any of my real skin underneath that thing. Really? Um, but yeah, so they, they, they avoided any, you know, that any, any political deep fakes that were trying to you know, trick people or anything that people were trying to make pornography yeah. with or whatever. They were just like, Nope, that we, we, we can filter that out before we get, can, they don't have to send it back to you. They can just close it off. Right. But with, with Snapchat, everything was done in the app. So people were doing naughty things with it. And as soon as they found out what was going on, they're like, well, we can't do that anymore. Bye, filter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking with John Bailey right now here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll get to that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop with John Bailey and your question. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> The Harlan Hogan Portaboot Pro is making an impact worldwide. Voice talents in Europe and all over are discovering the solution to recording their voice tracks on the road. And it's not just the voiceover community. PBS and even several prisons are purchasing the Portabooth Pro for broadcasts and podcasts. Even more amazing, five touring companies of Broadway shows like Wicked are using the Pro across the country. Why is the Portabooth Pro gaining users worldwide? Performers can capture great audio even in acoustically untreated spaces with the Portabooth Pro. Your microphone hears the sound of a human-sized sound booth at a fraction of the size and cost. The Pro accommodates large and long microphones, lengthy scripts, and e-reading devices. The Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro is lined with Oralex Studio Foam. It's a professional quality sound studio that assembles in less than a minute, and its multi-pocketed carrying case makes it super easy to take your gear and your voice wherever you go. Order your Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro now, only at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. When I speak with actors about adding audiobooks to their voiceover quiver uh, and doing so through my class, the one I teach with Dan O'Day called the ACX Masterclass, they say, look, we know it's a valuable class. It's, it's got all the things we need. It's really expensive. Do you have a payment plan? I, I usually have to say, no, we don't. But now I can say, yes, we do, because we're going to do a special four-month payment plan that reduces your four-monthly payments down to uh, an amount that would fit in anybody's budget. And then on your fourth payment, we start the class, right? The beginning of uh, 2022. So you don't even have to remember that we're opening the doors on this on December 20th. All you have to do is go now to acxmasterclass.com. Take a moment, do it now. Join our alert list, and we'll let you know when the doors open on this special four-month payment plan for the ACX Masterclass. That's acxmasterclass.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back with John Bailey having a great time. I don't know how great a time he's having right now, but... <laughs> Give me stones! <laughs> Anyway, we got lots of questions from our worldwide and various audience, and they're just fascinated with what you're talking about. Why don't we get into those? George, why don't you get the first question there from Will Hansen? Yes, from Will Hansen. His question tonight, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, actually. Uh, his question tonight is, good evening, everyone. Happy New Year, hopefully. I was wondering what your thoughts were on emulation-style mics. I just bought the Slate ML1 since it was on sale, but have yet to use it in my laptop because uh, I guess it just it crashed. crashed. Yeah, I have regular mics also, but wondering what you guys thought about them. Thanks. Normally, we might save this for the tech 
segment of the show, but well, we hey, got John on, so it's here. And John, John, you, you've been sticking. <laughs> John, it's you've crazy. been sticking it. You guys are you, doing you've been, great. <laughs> <laughs> you've been sticking it out with the same mic. You're like, I, I, I am a human work. golden retriever, man. Once I find something that works, what's why improve on perfection? <laughs> I know. I think it's a crutch for a lot of people. I do too. I think a lot of people get very obsessed with the audio quality more so than the talent portion of things. And they can, you can spend a million dollars on a booth. I mean, Dan kept telling me not to buy this booth because he's like, you don't need it. You don't need this to sound awesome. But uh, it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and, padded. You can go was crazy. Only, in it there. was only $5,000. And, and it was, and Todd Abercorn was like getting rid of it right down the street. And I'm like, <laughs> it was only three inches too tall for his house. I'm like, well, I can't not get it now. <laughs> I do want to get it small. I do want to, I want to downsize it. Unfortunately, they're going to charge me more to replace the pieces <laughs> to get a smaller booth because it's an eight by four and I really need a four by four. But I can't imagine Whoa, how much hotter huge. it would be if it's smaller. Yeah, it's it's well, the it's also, the size of the ones at the at the agencies. It's it's a full size booth, and you could fit. Well, it's been great though, because I have a friend of mine who uh, who stays with me, and she's she's basically my roommate now, and uh, she's trying to get a voiceover, and I'm trying to mentor her, and I'm doing everything I can to help her out. So when she comes in here to do voiceover stuff, I can stand right there and kind of direct and help and guide and stuff with. And there's still plenty of room in here, so uh, yeah, it's, it's the space has helps in some certain cases. So it's not a total. No, it wasn't a total waste, well, but it just it takes so much space. Time. Also helps acoustically. It's, it I have I have trouble. Than... I get I get a lot of extra roomy sound because I, it's so much, and I I still have trouble with efforts. Like when I need to call, like I need to yell to somebody, I have to be very careful not to blow the mic out and not to sound like this because it does it it, it picks up a yeah, little it's... bit extra. So yeah, yeah. It's, you know, sounds like you got two inch foam on the walls, but that's true. But it was free, so. Well, there you go. Yeah, this sounds like a, here's, here's, here's a cheap hack. You just buy a bunch more of that same pyramid foam and just glue it face to face with the foam that's already there. So right. it's interlocked. There you and go. And on that side nearest the mic, you'll have like a three inch thick, dense yeah. foam panel and it will absorb a lot yeah, more. This is uh, aerozoom.com, guys. It's 25 bucks for a package of like 12 of these things. Yeah. So yeah, just, it's like yeah. Just they were just like, hey, if you make that. a video with it, we'll give you a whole. We'll give you two two packages of this stuff for free. I'm like, I'll freaking okay. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Social influencing. You just, you just gotta you just gotta beef it up, man. It's just not thick and dense enough. You just yeah. need to double. The I just I wanted it to look pretty. I wanted to have it because originally I had it all green because that's what came with it. And I love Todd, but I'm not a big fan of green. I love blue. I love purple. And uh, so I had to fill in the gaps so you can see that there's multi multi colors in here. There's green in the roof. There's green behind the the mic, and this one wall and the door is black and blue. But uh, if it because I, I was I was hoping if it was all green that I could also green screen myself while I was in the booth. But that did not work out very well. Uh, <laughs> too, many, too many shadows on all the triangles or on, on all the yeah. It's hard. It, it's take it from us who've been trying to do green screening for years. It is hard. It is not easy to get that thing lit perfectly. No, exactly. Not easy. <laughs> Yeah. A uh, question from Jim McNicholas on YouTube. He says, question for John. You look amazing. I was going to ask you about this, but I'll let him do it. Uh, well, I'm still asking. What did you do to take off all the weight? Congratulations. Got what? <laughs> Got a divorce. Oh, that'll be. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> worked for me. Almost, you can lose up to 200 pounds instantly. By getting rid of it. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 she originally had gone out of town to visit family, and I had been saying for years that if, if I was given the opportunity to do things my way, I could probably do better with my health. And I was determined to prove it. I was hoping to surprise her when she came back and like, ta-da, look how, how good I look. What specifically and, did you do? Uh, well, you can buy my book, 1995, plus shipping and handling. <laughs> right the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, right the no, same. It, it was, uh, it was um, it, it's just doing the things that everybody already knows what to do. If you, guys, you guys have interviewed Vanessa Marshall before, right? No, I don't think so. Oh, you need to interview Vanessa Marshall. She's an amazing story. She used to be very overweight as well, and she realized, and she she told this during the business of a voice acting panel with Pat Brady and Kathy uh, Kathy Elizio from CSD and Greg Berger, and they did this. They did a panel, and it's the last panel of every Comic Con every year in San Diego, and it's uh, Mark Eveniers because he runs like all the major panels, but he's like one people who want to become a voice actor, not just getting up there with the script and doing a funny table read. This is like the business side of things because a lot of people don't have a good idea of what all is involved and sometimes how hard it can be. So she was talking about how she just had to learn to love herself and, and be comfortable in her own skin and like 
herself. And I, I knew the words, I heard them, but it's, it's hard to figure out how to make that work for you. So I just started doing the things that I knew were good for me and started being happy about it and forcing myself to be happy about it and forcing myself to like what I saw in the mirror instead of trying to avoid it like a vampire. <laughs> and um, I think I think a lot of people with health problems, especially when it comes to their nutri nutrition, they know they know what we know what to eat, guys. We know we just don't choose to do it. We choose the wrong things and we say we don't know what we're doing and we look for people with a magical diet when we, we already know what we need to do. Because if you've ever done anything for your nutrition before and for your health before and you saw any kind of progress, then you already know what to do. And I'd, I'd lost a lot of weight before. I, at one point, I was 335 pounds. And I got down to 189, and I was wow. on my that was fif, 14 years ago, fif, 15 years ago, and it was when my youngest daughter was born. And due to some personal circumstances, I didn't do very well, and I gained all the way back up to 313 pounds again. When I went to the weight loss clinic to get tested to see if I could qualify for B12 shots, they said, "Have you had a heart? Have you ever had a heart attack?" I was 35 at the time. I'm like. No, I've never had a heart problem before. It's like, well, there's definitely a heart thing that showed up on your EKG and you should be aware of it. We think you're healthy enough for this, for the, for the shots, but you should be aware of it. And that was the first red flag of like, I need to take this more seriously. And then when Brad passed away at the same age I am now from a similar situation, I was like, I really need to take care of this thing and really need to take better care of myself. So I avoided eating the things that I know are bad for me, like potatoes and starchy vegetables. And I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. I have grilled pork, poultry and fish rarely. I, I call it vegan-ish because I don't completely cut, but I cut out da dairy was a big part of it. Because dairy is so bad for you <laughs> because they try to, they, they try to tote it like, oh, you're getting calcium, and, but you're really just having a lot of fat and a lot of sugar. So I started going with vegan options instead. So vegan cheese and uh, um, non-bread bread. Bread was another big one for me because I just, I tend to be in a hurry. And I put everything on two pieces of bread to make it faster and eat quicker to eat. Jeez. And if you've ever had a lettuce wrap before, you know what a huge freaking mess it can make on nice clothes, <laughs> yeah. especially when you're driving down the road and you're trying yeah. to eat. <laughs> no, They're so, not made for driving, no. So, yeah, I just I started eating smaller portions, eating healthier foods, eating less often, um, and not eating late at night. Like once it gets dark, you know, 8, 9 o'clock, it's just like, no more. Don't do, don't do that anymore. And then I would do some kind of exercise every day, it, it, at least an hour. And I try to always do more than that, but at least an hour of some kind of physical activity. And for me, the easiest thing to do for, for a while, at least was hiking. Just do, I go down to Williker park and you probably know where I'm talking about the tree people trail. Mm -hmm. And I did tree people and rainforest back to back, which is about three miles altogether with a 40 pound weight vest on. I kind of added a notch to it. And then I just wow. got to wear, I mean, I started with a 20 pound vest and then that got so easy. I've switched to do a 40 pound vest and then that started getting easy. And I'm actually about to upgrade to a 60 pound vest that I got to the point where I could almost jog the thing up and down and I would go all the way to the end and come all the way back. And I would just do that every day and take one day off. And then when it, I got home, just to kind of put together a very affordable small gym in my backyard with a, there's a great place out here called Play It Again Sports that has a lot of used equipment. And I would wait till they had a decent sale on something, you know, a hundred bucks for a bike or a, a treadmill was only like $150. And it's a, it's, they, they all come from actual professional gyms. And I'm like, I'm getting gym quality stuff for rock bottom prices here. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it's not so cheap, but most of the stuff I got was pretty affordable. Got a, a $90 bench press. Got a few weights from from Walmart, by the way. If you need weights, get it from Walmart. Free shipping. You know how much it costs to ship very heavy weights? <laughs> you get free shipping <laughs> from Walmart. Whoa. And it's only like $40, $40 for a 25-pound weight. Wow. So, yeah, I, implementing stuff that I knew was good for me. I know soda was horrible for me. That was one of my biggest addictions was Diet Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper. And I just it's pure freaking. And my doctor had told me a long time ago, he said, I've been telling people for years that the aspartame and diet soda keeps you from losing weight. And I, I remember one time I'd gone to the doctor and I came back a month later and I lost 35 pounds. He's like, what did you do? I was like, I just drank water. I quit drinking soda. He's like, I've been telling people that for decades and nobody ever listens to me. Hmm. So that was the big thing for me was just not going back to it over and over again. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink. Uh, um, I mean, I rarely occasion I, like there's a social media event. Usually I'm the guy with the water on the rocks pretending that it's vodka. Um, <laughs> you throw a mint in there. People think that's a real drink, you guys. So uh, <laughs> I know it's it's supposed to be smooth, delicious aviation American gin. <laughs> but it's not it's just water folks um so uh yeah mainly water every once in a while i'll have tea um there's a great drink for anybody who didn't this is a good one by the way i i don't normally have cool tips for the guys who know everything about voiceover did you know that there's a drink at starbucks called the medicine ball i did not know that 
there's a medicine ball tea that's exactly the kind of honey lemon tea that you would have if you have throat issues. And it's my go-to, like throat's getting a little itchy, your throat's a little whatever. Freaking order a medicine ball, folks, from Starbucks. It's freaking all. I didn't, how did I not know that sooner? <laughs> how did we not know that? All right. John, I love that you stuff. shared with that. John, that's what I love about having you on, man, because you're so candid with us. And our yeah, I, I can't help it. I you, just blur, you tell I just blur us, stuff out. <laughs> no, I mean, you just tell us what you're going through and you're telling us how it is, man. It's just that kind of candidness is is rare and it's valuable. So I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. We um, sometimes it takes a long time to get the foot out of my mouth, but, you know. Be, <laughs> hey, you know got to be a straight shooter. You know what? Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because you're – not you're only great. getting healthier, but your career's just going like crazy. You're doing yeah, I will, man. I wished, I wished I could say, I, I, the biggest, somebody had mentioned a question about big bucket list things. Um, one of the biggest bucket list things I think most voice actors have is being the voice of a ride in a major theme park. And I checked that one off and I'll get to hear it this year. They may actually be giving me a ticket to go see it. And I wished I could tell you which park and what ride. Unfortunately, it's not out yet. When the commercial drops, I'm also in that too. And hopefully I'll be able to share by then, but it's freaking like holy crap <laughs> so uh yeah th that's always because i remember when when greg griffin got the uh the the red pirate and pirates i was like that's so freaking that i was i would have been on cloud nine to be the voice of the pirates of the caribbean right because it's it's freaking disneyland you know what i mean yeah yeah so like anytime i feel like i get a, if somebody gets a voice at a universal studios ride or like one, the big the main big thing part rides because i i cannot help it if you guys have never been to six flags and rode the justice league ride you get to hear so many of our favorite people. Tara Strong's in there. Richard F. Carr's in there. I'm like, I know all these folks. That's cute. That's Kevin Conroy as Batman. <laughs> so yeah, it's freaking great. And so, uh, and they're like you know animatronics. What, you know, it's freaking cool, man. That, that's Dan. We got to figure out a way to to come to that ride when John's there and and <laughs> shoot shoot something for the show and just be Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Just get that's some video. Great, Even if cool, it, you're man. shooting a selfie on the ride, John, we got to get. <laughs> something for, i don't know if it can or not it's 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 half virtual so i'm not sure if phones oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. can't yeah yeah there may be a strict no no phone policy i don't know but i'm not allowed to say anything i, I always i always get overzealous and i know there was for a brief moment i think it was 2017 or 2018 i don't know if you guys got that memo but there was a lot of people who were like hey we're, we need to start taking this whole NDA thing a little more seriously because people are just blurted out from the studio like, hey, I'm a voice of such and such. And they're like posting pictures in studio with the script and the stuff on the screens. And I'm like, this isn't even out yet. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I always like it when somebody just says, uh, you know, was that your voice on that thing? And I'm like, no. No, no. I always, I give them the, I give them, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. You want to get that my question aunt, from? Yeah, go ahead, Jared. Yeah, go ahead. My, there's one from my aunt. I gotta ask it because it was relayed to me from my mom in the room. She's like, "Aunt, your aunt Linda wants to know, um, can John do some more of his of his voices? You know how it is when someone comes on and does voices. People just want to hear more. What are some that you've done from the past? Maybe from some." My name Game is Optimus Prime, that's just, and I am yeah. the leader of an autonomous robotic organism from the planet Cybertron called Autobots. That's my, my all-time favorite. And of course, there's, hi there, how are you? You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys don't see me bleed. This guy gets it. He wore his brown <laughs> pants. <laughs> and then, you know, I got the, you know, the dude man just kind of out there looking for his rug, you know, whatever, you know. And, uh, you know. Just whatever. Just throw me from throw me some throw me some voices out. Oh know. well, you, well, we we love the one you do of of uh, Christopher Walken. <laughs> wow, wow! I only do old Walken. This is so much so much more comfortable because you got to get down low and you got to gravel. And that's she's not just another notch on your belt. I'm a very powerful man. I can have you writing parking tickets in Siberia. <laughs> 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 What's the secret to doing to, to really capturing those voices? I, well, I mean, I a lot... it, it started as a party trick. It started as just a funny, like doing impressions was some way to either get people to not hate me, because <laughs> I'm a very socially awkward person because of my bluntness. And well, I mean, I just don't shut up and just blah, all this stuff just vomits out of my mouth. Honesty. Um, so I, I, cause I don't know how to act. I've, I've been around children my, most of my life. Cause I was always taking care of kids. I got married when I was 21. We had our first kid by the time I was 22 and it was just 
no more friends. I'm taking care of children all the time. So it was dit, 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 Dora and Teletubbies. And so I didn't know how to be adults around other adults. So it just kind of became this thing that like, oh, hey, I do voices. And uh, I had started doing impressions when I was a kid. I started with Grover because I was a super competitive kid. And my mom tried to convince me that she could do Grover better than me. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, uh, I, it just got to be where I had to fine tune it. And I'm, I'm a very perfectionistic person. I'm very OCD about things being right. And I think that a combination of having a very good ear for it and knowing even if I don't know the terms for it, knowing the different part, like D. Bradley Baker does, and just knowing every single part of your instrument to be able to hear what that person's voice sounds like and where it's coming from with inside them. And if you can just, and for, for me, it used to be, because now it's different, but it used to be is like once I latched onto a voice, and I'll give you a good example for it. Um, Robert Stack, for example, rest in peace, uh, the, the original host of Unsolved Mysteries. Right. He, just had, he had a very, a very unique voice. And don't call me Shirley. You know, that he was that, um, the, the, <laughs> Dan, Dan and George went into the woods. Only one man came out. Where did the body go? We'll find out next on the next edition of Unsolved Mysteries. You know, it was just like, it, he had that cool mysteries. <laughs> and I picked up on all those little tiny parts, but I would just talk that way for a whole 24 hours until I just locked it in. And it drove everybody crazy because my, my ex would come in and she would be like, hey, what do you want to have for lunch today? I was like, I think I want to have Subway. Because <laughs> I just didn't want to break character. And now, because of my, my, the expedience of my manager, my agent's like, hey, we need this within 15 minutes. I don't have time to do it for 24 hours. I literally have to run and gun. I have to listen to it, figure out what all the parts are that make that voice unique and what parts that I can do that same thing for in a very short amount of time. And it, so it can't, be, it can't be perfect because there's just no time. So right. I just have to do the best I can with what little time I do have. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, especially when I've never heard of them before. They give me a lot of actors that are new and I'm like, oh. But I'll, it's usually once I see them, I'm like, oh, I know that guy. That's the guy from the thing. But uh, yeah, so I, I just, I never know what they're going to throw at me. I, and I've booked ones that I never thought I'd book. I never thought I'd book Jeff Bridges. His voice is so freaking, you know, Chris Pratt is the most normal voice in the world. I had to reverse, reverse engineer it because I was, I was listening to the same thing reverse with Jeff Voice engineer. Voice. You heard yeah. that here first. <laughs> patent, right, patent, copy, copyright, patent pending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> time time capsule. So, trademark. So I, uh, uh, they, I remember them giving me an audition for Jeff Bridges' voice. I'm like, oh, freaking crap. I've never even done Jeff Bridges' voice before. So I was like, okay, okay. All right, how can I do this? So I listened to it. And I'm like, okay, well, what voice do I do that, that sounds like that already? And I noticed that it sounded like it sounded like John Madden from Frank Caliendo and Mad TV. Boom! This is the place for hardware. And so I worked backwards from there. I started with Frank's impression of John Madden, and I've told this to Frank. Frank and I became friends through TikTok. You never know. Uh, so Frank was like, "Dude, that's a freaking great story." So uh, I started with an impression of an imp impression of a voice, and then just kind of took that John Madden thing. You guys, the poop. Well, here's a guy. You know, you got George over here in the one microphone. You got Dan over here on the other side. Where rest in peace, John Madden, who just recently passed away. And I just kind of toned it down a little bit and moved it to a different part of the throat. And for a while, he was only doing cowboy. Ever since True Grit, he did like seven cowboy characters in a row. So everything had that kind of rough and tumble, a little bit of, you know, swagger, you know, get that PD thing there, son, you know. And I, that's where I just kind of worked my way down from a different voice that sounded similar. And I did the same thing with Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's voice, when I heard it, I'm like, okay. Who does it sound like? And I noticed that it sounded like, wow, it sounded like Owen Wilson a little bit. Like, wow, it had that, you just take away that West Coast accent and you had a little bit of, uh, a little bit of Missouri to it. And you're like a uh, blue echo. You have to respect these animals. Pew, pew, bullet, bullet, gun, gun. Hey, I'm a Lego. You know, and that was, they were like, hey, that's it. That's it. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool. Go, go. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And it's just, Cut, and print. the only time I ever thought they were wrong, <laughs> I was filling in for a Brad Pitt film. I have never understand how I booked this. And I didn't even audition for it. They just, my agent's like, hey, how's your Brad Pitt? I'm like, huh? You serious? <laughs> <laughs> Ross Marquand is the only one I know that can do Brad Pitt's voice. And it's it's a good impression, but it's not a great sound alike. I don't know anybody who can do a good sound alike for Brad Pitt. Because he's got a very he's got a very unique voice. It's it's very back of the throat. It's it's very you know, and I I don't do a good one. I just just eh. And he's like, I, I said, okay. And he's like, well, just give me like a scale of one to ten. And I'm like, okay, well, and an impression scale, not a sound alike scale, an impression scale. Maybe a six if I was being extremely generous to myself. I can do kind of a funny Brad Pitt sound alike. Um, and then the, he he calls me back and like, hey, you got the job. I rounded you up to a seven because I figured you were playing yourself down. And I'm like, dude, no freaking pressure, man. Come on. 
And then they dreaded, like, we need to hear a sound clip. I'm like, oh, here it goes. Bye, job. <laughs> so I, I sent them an excerpt from, well, they, they sent me an audio clip from the film. And I did my best to match it and send the clip back. But I was basically just doing a really bad Tyler Dirt from, from Fight Club. And then when I got in, they were like, okay, we'll see you. We're, we're listening for you on Tuesday. I'm like, okay, I guess I got the job. And then when they got on the, when they got on the phone and the client started talking, talking, it took everything I had not to laugh. Because, oh, we love your Brad Pitt. So great. Yeah, Brad Pitt was the best. <laughs> you so, you're the best Brad Pitt ever. Yeah, we love the Brad Pitt. So very good. And I'm like, oh, they're all German. They think we all white guys sound like Brad Pitt. I'm golden. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> now it makes, it makes total, total sense. sense. Exactly. <laughs> well, John, it is always a pleasure to talk with you, whether it's in person or, uh, you know, here on uh, on VoiceOver Body Shop. And you got a lot of great stories. And I, I do. I have so many <laughs> well, stories. You're working with all this great stuff, so I really appreciate it. Uh, once again, you can get Honest Trailers on YouTube? Yeah. Just go anything you can find on Google. Just Google it. <laughs> yeah. Just just Google John Bailey and J O N B. Just go onto the computer and, and you'll find John him Bailey. there somewhere. No way. Very good. Like All righty. Yeah. Thanks well, for being with us. It was absolutely my pleasure. Everyone, please come visit the Hundred Acre Wood. We are so very lonely, not a Christopher Robbins, an old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh bother. Oh, All righty. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back uh, to wrap things up. And then George and I will re-rack it for Tech Talk. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's that time of the show where we thank Source Elements for supporting us again, now in 2022. And they are still kings of the hill when it comes to kings and queens, because it's a female-owned company. You may not know that. Um, owned by Rebecca Wilson. This company is continuing to develop and improve their products and their training and give just better and better service as years go on. And that's you know, what their, their tools are unique and that they provide the best way of connecting studios together remotely for the best, most consistent quality of audio. Others are doing this now, but they still have a unique way of doing that that maintains the quality better than anything you can do over Chrome or ever over any web browser. But they're, they're also adding in, you know, better support than anybody else. And they're adding in a new certification program, which you can certify yourself on uh, Source Connect Standard or Pro. Pretty much everybody watching the show, Standard is the one that you're probably using or considering. Um, and if you get certified, you're going through a whole, basically an online training program. It's not a joke. It takes a couple hours to go through it. But when you get done and you take the quiz at the end and you pass, you will, you will have learned something along the way. And you'll be showing yourself and anybody else who wants to hire you that you have an understanding of not only how Source Connect works and how your studio works, but just how all these things work together. And you'll just feel more confident when you do get that Source Connect gig. And those are generally the best paying gigs in voiceover are ones using Source Connect. It's a fact. So anyway, thank you, Source Elements. If you guys want to get uh, up and running, you should just go over to source-elements.com, get a free trial. It is free, works completely unlimited for 15 days, and you'll have time to try it out and see 
how it works and make sure you're feeling comfortable with making it run on your system. And yes, it does support Monterey now, the newest bleeding edge Mac OS that comes on all the brand new Macs. So you can use it. Anyway, thanks again. Let's wrap this up and get to Tech Talk right after this. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, welcome back to Voice Over Body Shop. Thanks to John Bailey. God, he's funny. <laughs> just he's a machine gun. He's funny, and he's just dead honest. Just Brutally so honest. like candid and just... He tells you like it is. Who's going to come on the show and say, yep, I have a kidney stone. Yep, I'm going through a divorce. <laughs> yep, that's all happening right now. I mean, it's just, it yeah, just sounds yeah. like it is, man. But that's why I was, that's why I told him, I was like, just keep doing what you're doing because no question. You're doing the right thing. Uh, you don't come into Hollywood and book on this, the volume that he's doing in that period of time without some incredible talent and some real stick stick to it like yeah. some tenacity, you know, really real honest guy. Well, next week on this very show, we will present to you tech talk number 70. If you're going to, if you're watching live right now, hang out, we're going to record tech talk number 70 right after this. So you can ask your questions about technology and uh, home studio stuff. Uh, who are our donors this week? We have Rob Rader. What we keep getting donations? What? Yes, we still uh, people still like us for some reason. Uh, Patty Givens, Greg, Greg Thomas, Shauna Pennington Baird. Uh, yes, I Con Productions. That's Martha Con, Martha, my dear. Don Griffith, Steve Chandler, Sandra Manwiller, Robert Leadham, Antland Productions. That's Uncle Roy, Shelley Avellino, Thomas Pinto. Brian Page. And none other than George A. Widow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Uh, and a doctor voice, who I'm going to guess is probably Nathan, Dr. Nathan Carlson. Who, An ER whenever. doctor, that's right. That's right. Well, it's uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's Voice Over Essentials. Voice Over Extra. Sora Sullivan's. VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and, and JMC Demos. Demos. All right. Thanks to Jeff Holman watching out in the chat room, getting all those great questions in there on uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. Sue Merlino just sitting there in her house there in Burbank, but getting it done and making sure that technically there are no problems at all. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Uh, we're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So if you got your questions, get them in the chat room right now. In the meantime, that's all for this week on Voice Over Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Yes. All righty. <laughs>